Hi! Today I will be reading you the story called Frederick and Catherine. There was once a man called Frederick and he had a wife named Catherine. One day Frederick said to his wife, Kate, I am going to work in the fields. When I come back, I will be hungry, so have something nice for me to eat. I also want a cold jug of beer. Very well, said Catherine. It will all be ready when you come back. When lunchtime came, Catherine took a nice piece of meat, which was the only meat she had, and put it on the fire. The meat soon began to look brown, and Catherine stood nearby and turned it. Then she said to herself, the meat is almost ready. I might as well go downstairs for the beer. So she left the pan on the fire, took up a large jug, and went downstairs. There, she took the stopper cork from the bottom of a big barrel and watched the beer go into the jug. After that, she remembered the meat again. The dog is inside the house, she thought. He may try to run away with the meat. So she ran upstairs, and sure enough, the dog had the meat in his mouth. Away ran the dog and away ran Catherine. They ran through a big field in front of the house, but the dog ran faster than she did and the dog finally ate all the meat. Well, what's done is done, said Catherine. She turned from the field and slowly walked back to the house. Now all this time, the beer was running too for Catherine had not put the cork back in the barrel. And when the jug was full, the beer ran all over the floor until the barrel was empty. When she went back downstairs and saw the floor, she knew what had happened. My stars, she said, what shall I do to keep Frederick from seeing the beer all over the floor? At last, Catherine remembered the cornmeal in the kitchen. I will spread the cornmeal all over the floor and it will suck up the beer, she thought. And what a good thing that I still have some. There is good use for it now. So away she went for the cornmeal. When Catherine returned, she put the cornmeal on top of the large jug of beer. But when she picked up the cornmeal to spread it on the floor, the jug of beer turned over and everything that was saved was now swimming on the floor. Ah, oh, well, she said. When one goes, another might as well follow. So she spread the cornmeal all over the floor and watched it suck up the beer. She was quite pleased with herself and said, How nice and clean it looks. At lunchtime, Frederick came home. Now, wife, he cried, what have you for me to eat? Oh, Frederick, she answered, I was cooking your meat but when I went to get the beer, the dog ran away with the meat. And when I ran after him, the beer ran out of the barrel. And when I went for the cornmeal to suck up the beer, I turned over the jug. But don't worry, my dear, the floor is now quite dry. And if I say so myself, it looks very clean. Kate, Kate, said Frederick, how could you do all this? Why did you leave the meat to cook and the beer to run? and then use up all the cornmeal. Why, Frederick, she said, I did not know I was doing wrong. You should have told me before. Frederick looked very sad. If my wife manages things this badly, he thought, I had better keep an eye on things myself. Frederick had a lot of gold pieces in the house, so he showed them to Catherine and said, What pretty yellow buttons these are. I shall put them in a box and plant them in the garden. Take care that you never go near these yellow buttons or trouble them. Oh no, answered Catherine, I would never do that. But as soon as Frederick left the house again, two peddlers came by with pots, pans and pretty dishes. They asked Catherine if she wanted to buy some from them. Oh dear me, cried Catherine, I would really like to buy some of these things but I have no money. If you have use for pretty yellow buttons, I might be able to take some of these things from you. Yellow buttons, said the peddlers. Let us have a look at them. Well, go into the garden, said Catherine, and dig where I tell you. 
You will find some yellow buttons there. So the peddlers went into the garden, and when they found that the yellow buttons were really gold, they took them all away. They did, however, leave Catherine plenty of pots and dishes. After the peddlers left, Catherine placed the pretty dishes all about the house. But when her husband came back, he cried out, Kate, what have you been doing? Look at this, she said. I bought all these things with your yellow buttons, but I did not go near them myself. The peddlers went and got them from the garden. Wife, wife, cried Frederick. Those pretty yellow buttons were really gold. How could you do such a thing? I did not know there was anything wrong with what I did, said Catherine. You should have told me. After that, Catherine thought about things for a while. At last, she said to her husband, do not worry, my dear Frederick. We will soon get back the gold. All we have to do is run after the thieves. We will try, said Frederick, but take some butter, cheese, and bread so that we may have something to eat on the way. Very well, she replied, and both Frederick and Catherine set out after the thieves. Frederick walked faster than Catherine and often left his wife behind, but this did not trouble Catherine. I don't really care, she thought. When we turn back, I will be much nearer home than Frederick is. After a while, Catherine came to the top of a hill. Down the side of this hill was a road so small that the wheels of passing carts were always hitting against the trees as they went by. Look at those poor trees, said Catherine. They are getting all cut up and will never get well. She felt so sorry for the trees that she put some butter on them so that the wheels of the cars would not hurt them so much. But while she was doing this, one of the pieces of cheese fell out of the basket and rolled down the hill. Catherine looked, but she could not see where the cheese had gone. Well, thought Catherine, I suppose the other pieces of cheese will go the same way and find you. So she rolled the other one, and away it went down the hill. I suppose they know the way and will follow me, she said to herself, and I really can't stay all day to wait for them. At last, Catherine caught up with Frederick. He was hungry and wanted something to eat, so she gave him a dry piece of bread. Where are the butter and cheese? he asked. I can't eat this dry bread. Oh my, answered Catherine. I used the butter to put on those poor trees. Then one piece of cheese rolled down the hill, so I sent the other piece to find it. I suppose they are both on the road looking for us. Catherine, why do you do such foolish things? said Frederick. How can you say that to me? replied Catherine. I am sure you never told me not to do it. After that, Catherine and Frederick ate dry bread together. Then Frederick said, Catherine, did you lock the door when you left the house? Well, replied Catherine, I really don't think that I did. You never told me to do it. Well, it is not safe to leave the door like that, said Frederick. Go home right now and see about it and bring back something to eat. Catherine did as she was told and started to walk to the house. Frederick wants something to eat, she thought but I don't really think he likes butter and cheese. I will bring him some salt and a bottle of vinegar, for I have often seen him eat these things. When she finally reached her husband again, she cried out, Frederick, my dear, here is the door itself. You may watch it as carefully as you please. Oh, Catherine, said Frederick, you aren't very bright. I sent you to make the house safe, and you take the door off. Now everybody can go in and out as they please. Well, he went on, now that you have brought the door, you will carry it. Very well, answered Catherine. I will carry the door, but not the salt and the bottle of vinegar. That would be too much. So if you please, I will tie the salt and bottle of vinegar to the door. Frederick agreed to this and they set off again to look for the thieves. When it became dark, they climbed up into a tree to spend the night there. They were just going to sleep when the very thieves they were looking for 
sat down and made a fire under the tree where they were. Frederick slipped down on the other side of the tree and picked up some stones. Then he climbed up again and tried to hit the thieves on the head with them. As he was throwing the stones, one of the thieves said, We are very lucky. The wind is beginning to shake the apples down. Catherine, who still had the door on her back, began to feel very tired. She was sure it was the salt that was making the door so heavy. She turned to her husband and whispered, Frederick, I must let the salt go. No, he answered, not now or they will find us. I can't help it, Frederick, she said. I must let the salt go. Well, said Frederick, throw it down if you have to, but do it quickly. So Catherine poured the salt down on the ground. Right after that, one of the thieves said, Dear me, it is snowing. A little after that, Catherine thought that the door was still very heavy. She whispered to Frederick, I must throw down the vinegar now. Don't do that, answered Frederick. If you do, they will find us. I can't help it, she said. The vinegar must go. So she turned over the bottle and watched all the vinegar pour out. In truth, said the thieves, now it is beginning to rain. At last it came into Catherine's head that it was the door itself that was so heavy. So she whispered to Frederick, I must throw the door down. Please don't, begged Frederick. If you throw down the door, they will be sure to find us. Well, I can't hold it any longer, replied Catherine. And with that, she dropped the door. It landed with a great big bang. Murder, 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 cried the thieves. And not knowing what was coming down next, they ran away as fast as they could and left the gold. So, when Frederick and Catherine came down from the tree, they found all the money safe and sound. The end. That was just an absurd story, but I hope you liked it. It was quite fun for us as children to read about the silly things that Catherine did. She's almost as bad as Silly Billy. Or maybe she beats Silly Billy. You tell me. Leave me a comment below. Thank you so much for watching. And take care. Bye-bye.